Do we have uh, Mr. Zacharias on the phone, the writer of this classic film? <laughs> Steve, Steve Zacharias. <laughs> we are, Steve, we have... Uh, I'm a huge fan. This is literally one of my favorite films, if not my favorite. I am so honored to be speaking to you right now. Um, but I'm trapped with millennials who are just have a very different take on this movie because I don't think they had the experiences we did. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> well, you're right. But these were based on your experiences, some of them, growing up. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it was it, Revenge of the Nerds was my best experience in show business. I was in show. I, I was a writer for 35 years, and that was my best experience. It was like we wrote the script, and then the casting was fantastic. The uh, the, the the lady who did, did airplane uh, cast it, and she's like amazing. And uh, we were very, you know, we we I loved Risky Business, and Curtis Armstrong was brilliant in that. And mm -hmm. I, I said, if we get him as Booger, we got a hit. Mm -hmm. Can we and, go back to the uh, writing process, though? What you know, what what gave you the idea, and tell me about how, how the you know the all, the writing of it and, and how it all came together. All right. Um, well, first of all, I, I I wrote with my partner uh, Jeff Buhai, mm -hmm. um, who we grew up together in Highland Park, Illinois. And uh, we, we wrote a script before it called Inside the Inquirer, um, which was, uh, we worked with an editor from the Inquirer magazine about the different stories that go on behind the scenes on the, on the stories in the Inquirer. And uh, then all of a sudden there was, a, we got called in by David Opes and Peter Bart. Okay, Peter, Peter Bart, yeah. And yeah, Peter ended up running uh, uh, yeah, what do you call it? The variety. Yeah, yeah, he's a monster. And uh, and David was amazing. David David was the the agent for Woodward and Bernstein during Watergate, and um, eighteen other journalists during Watergate, including so, Seymour Hersh. So you and, went into uh, pitch. So you went into pitch the inside the Inquirer to them. No, uh, we went to meet with them because they there was an article in in the L.A. West magazine called Revenge of the Nerds. And it was a story about a bunch of kids out at Cal State Northridge who were dabbling with computers. Um, and computers were very new then. No one, you know, the, everyone thought computers were entire buildings, you know, the, the size of an entire building. And this, these were the first kids that were fooling around with smaller computers. And uh, so they wanted to make a movie out of it. And they were looking for... Uh, someone who wrote uh, sophomoric humor sophisticatedly and that's what we did in inside the inquirer and they liked it and so then they hired us to write revenge of the nerds and did you did you take that one line revenge of the nerds and start fresh there you know from yes wow yes we yeah we started right from that i mean i was very excited because i i've been writing like ridiculous uh tv comedy i uh, I did a show called Quark, which was about a garbage ship in outer space, and uh, a pilot called Scalpels for NBC, and just you know the most ridiculous things I could think of. When things were rotten, for uh, which was a Mel Brooks television show, mm -hmm. um, and so Revenge of the Nerds was just perfect for me to you know for it was it was campy and ridiculous, and and yet there was a point to it. And, uh, you know, you know, I like to think that we created the, uh, the nerd race. Um, and, uh, you know, before that, the only thing with nerd was, uh, uh, happy days, Dr. Right. Dr. Zeus <laughs> said the word, I guess in one of his books, but it wasn't used as a computer nerd. And then happy days used the nerd also, but I don't believe it, was, it had to do with computers either. So, um, we kind of feel like we styled and, and uh, the, you know, the entire nerd race and uh, the pecking how order. Do we, and the yeah. How do we stop them that. now? I feel like it's out of control. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we, I, you're, you're Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> we have to, everyone like your, no, um, there's so much I want to go over, but when, but with the, yes, there's obviously tons of comedy and to me it still holds up and it's very funny, but will you, what about the dramatic sense of it? Did, did, was there any meaning to to any of that to you, or is it just like more about no, the comedy? No, 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 it was about it was about being persecuted, 
you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I was a jock when I was in high school and there were a lot, a lot of nerdy kids and, and they were, you know, they were disregarded even though they were brilliant and sweet and, you know, wonderful. And, and, um, and the jocks were, you know, the, the, the gods of the school and, and, uh, uh, it was an obvious phenomena uh, that we tapped into, and uh, it's really grown into the anti-bullying and the, uh, um, you know, the the uh, you know, it's just it's become a phenomenon. It so. has, but there so there was so you know the, you mentioned the word persecution, and it's funny because I I had all the millennials on our show watch it, and they're all about. Bully, bully, bully. I mean, everybody. You can't even look at these guys wrong without being labeled a bully yourself. And yet they didn't feel any of it. You know, maybe you should well, speak to okay. it, Roxy. Here's to, the thing. You have very strong opinions. I feel as if the bullies were bullied harder than the nerds were. So we've That's got something. two columns here. Say you've got column A and column B, and you don't know what's going on in these people's lives. All you know are the facts. In column A, we have a group of people who had something burned on their lawn, they had their house vandalized, they've been shouted names at, they had pigs brought over. And in group B, we have a group of people who were taped unwillingly and unknowingly, were taking pictures of their nude bodies, were shown in the pies, and what I would think would be considered rape, were having somebody had sex with them and didn't let them know who it was, so it was not consensual. If you take those two columns, A and B, who would you say the people being more bullied are? The people in column A or the people in column B? Well, that was the revenge of the nerds. I mean, the, the, the nerds got a stronger revenge on the jocks and the, and, the, and the sorority girls than they did. But I agree with you. I mean, that was rape. And that was, you know, and it was... Uh, I mean, I would never do the movie like that now. Yeah, so, right? wait, so was it... Do you think it was what just, I would do now is I would have Lewis me. teach her how to do trigonometry and then she falls in love with them and then they can make love. <laughs> but That's you know, but you you probably didn't think of it that at the time that it no, was no, we, no, by no, the way, as a just, viewer I didn't think that either back then. Right. It, well, th there was a different sensibility and uh, there wasn't a sensibility. Let's put it like that. And uh uh th and it was, you know, it, it's over time, it's become a bad thing to do. And I, I would never do it again. And, and also the videoing was terrible, too. And, and, and you know, you had that uh, that lady who was the sports reporter who had the guy was videoing Aaron through, Andrews. Her, her, yeah, through her window at the yep. hotel, you know, and I mean, maybe he was a nerd. <laughs> so, I don't know about that, but it, it, it wasn't it wasn't a good idea to introduce, you know, like. A lot of times media does stuff like that. They introduce terrible concepts. Uh, you know, Rod Serling did that, uh, uh, that airplane zone? thing where there was a bomb that was going to go off in an airplane, you know. And, and it, it, you know, it puts thoughts into people's minds, and, and it wasn't good. How so in, uh, go ahead. in terms yeah. of this movie holding up, then, you're saying you wouldn't do things the exact same way. So do you feel like you almost put this in the media and that's something that you wish you hadn't? Or do you just think it was a different time? So it just kind of goes that way. Well, I would just say if I knew now what I knew then, I wouldn't have done that. Right. Hmm. It's interesting. I'm just, I, I, it's interesting though, the way that I, mean, I would have done something, I would have had them get revenge. You know, I mean, it was fine. They put the, uh, you know, the heat on the jocks, jock straps. Jock straps. Yeah. That was funny. That's yeah. good revenge. I do, th but see, these guys. We were talking earlier, uh, Steve, before we brought you on, and they didn't grow up in a world where we had jocks picking on nerds. I grew up in that world. You know, I knew an ogre. I knew all. I knew a stand. We knew all these guys. <laughs> you know, but back in in the eighties, but you know, by by the nineties, um, unfortunately, uh, they were all taken out. You know, it's all been with the helicopter parenting. I feel. So I never thought. Well, I don't know where it came from, but you know, I'm I'm a teacher at uh, Columbia College in Chicago, mm -hmm. and it's just very open. It's just very a very free environment. A very there, you know. I don't see any bullying. I don't see you know. It's okay to be gay. It's okay to 
to do whatever you want to do, you know. And um, it's just, a, you know, the, the kids there are just very open. Um, and it wasn't like that then. It wasn't like that in the 50s, um, you know, in, 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 in the high schools with the athletic environment and the college environment, um, you know. Uh, but, you know, I, I, you know, it's so things have changed. It's changed. I- I was watching yeah. an interview where I think you called your son a nerd, and I was curious because you seemed excited about that. Do you think it's almost easier nowadays to grow up as a nerd than it is as a jock or any of these other terms? I think it's okay now, yeah, but there still is bullying. There still is bullying. In fact, we're, we're, I'm working on a bullying project with uh, James Gavvy, uh, Gavvy, and and uh, we're, we're doing a play that's an anti-bullying play uh, using uh the mma fighting as 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 a, as a part of it and um you know he's like kind of an expert on bullying and uh and and you know it's it's out there it's you know it, it's still out there it's still you know there's a lot of bullying going on and and uh, uh you know you know to a certain extent i think it's worse than when i was a kid you know I, I, when I was a kid, they just kind of made fun. Now they, they, they had physical stuff, and, it, you know, it, it really can be awful. It seems like a fine line, though. Do you sometimes, as a writer, just sit there and think, like, gosh, I wish people could take a joke better? Because I, I don't mean that seriously. I don't mean to show No, they... No, I don't. I, I, no, I take it seriously. The, um, I, I, I think that... Um, you know, I think we were on the right side of everything except for those two moments, you know, with the video and, and the rape scene. Um, and, uh, and and w- there was like zero consciousness about that until, you know, uh, you know, until recently. Until I, recently. I, mean, I, I, I was watching uh, Bill Maher and, and uh, Seth uh, Rogen was on and, and he brought it up. He said Revenge of the Nerds was his favorite movie. And then all of a sudden there was this rape scene in it and it didn't bother him, you know, when he was a kid or whatever. But now recently, you know, with Bill Cosby and that's what they were talking about at the time, wow. um, you know, they, they uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it really wasn't right. And, um, you know, I, I, I agree with it, but there was a there wasn't really a consciousness of it then. You know, it was, it, it you know. There just wasn't a kind of It was a different. It definitely was a different time. If I know that, uh, I think it was Harvey Weinstein was trying to reboot this. Do you think it ever gets rebooted, the Revenge of the Nerds franchise? Well, you know, a lot of people have. I mean, they 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 uh, they shot it. They shot it at Emory College. They spent twelve million dollars, and the president of Emory College found out how raunchy it was and shut it down. Uh, and uh, so they, yeah, they 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 try every so I'm working on a couple of them myself. Yeah, um, would, would they bring? So, you, would uh, they get you back involved? It, how does that work? Do you just write one on spec and then see if you can sell it, or you know, because you probably don't have the rights at this point. No, you you, you have to go through Fox and everything, but uh, but there's different things that could be done with it that that haven't been done. There's never been a musical. You know, there's there's uh, interesting. There's all kinds. Of, there's all kinds of stuff that could be done with it now and then. There's different types of remakes and stuff that uh, that could be done. Um, so yeah, how does yeah. it look today, though? I mean, again, it probably wouldn't be so black and white. I think, right? I mean, it's it's because it's a different world. Yeah, well, you know, I love the Silicon Valley TV show. I do too. I mean, I mean that 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 really that's what that's what it is today. You know, um, so I would probably take a different approach. But that. there's almost yeah. nerd on nerd crime now in that show. You notice with you know their their biggest adversaries are bigger nerds on <laughs> exactly. that show. There's intra nerd intra nerd fighting. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you stay in um, touch with the the staff? The I mean the cast. I'm sorry. What? Do you stay in touch with the cast from Revenge of the Nerds? Not really. I mean, I did for a while. But, well, you know, we made three and four, and then we hung out a little then, and um, I watched you know, every one. And uh, we we weren't involved with two, and and it actually got ruined. Uh, wh- one of the things I want to go back to is on, on the first one, you know, there was a vi- very fine line, and maybe this is what you were talking about, uh, wh- as to whether it was mean spirited or not. 
And, and one of my favorite things was uh, walking out of the, the premiere, I saw Buck Henry and uh, Warren Beatty walking out, and they, and, they, and, and they were arguing about whether it was mean-spirited. Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, so there was kind of – it was just – that's what I think made it good was there was a fine line. There was do you really think that – do you think that – There was a fine line, and that nerds could be bad, you know. Oh, so, so, so when you say mean-spirited, would you, know? you think – well, wait, do you think that – they were at that time they were arguing that the nerds were mean spirited or the jocks were too mean spirited. Warren Beatty and the, Buck. Whole, the whole thing, the whole movie, whether it was mean spirited or not. Wow. You know, and it, it, it just it just you know, it, it it was on that border. It was really on that border, and I think that's what made it good. Why didn't you write number two? We didn't write number two because uh, our partner gossiped about the producer's sex life, and we weren't invited to write number two. Bully. What's that? It's a bully. He huh? was a bully. Bully move. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's sad because I felt I felt that number two missed the, the mark, and you know where. You, I did too. It was it, it was it was the, it was the second most anticipated film of the summer, and it was a big bomb. It it it, it, it went out at twenty five million in three weeks, and and. Uh, it was, it was supposed so to be a huge so hit. disheartening. What would you have done? What, any what would you have done with number two with a sequel, back then? Uh, you know, I don't I don't know, but I think it, it would have had some meaning to it. You know, it wouldn't have just been dribble. Would do, and, do you agree on sending them on? Some, there would have been some point to it. Do you think sending them on spring break would that have been? Yeah, I, maybe that could have been it, but I, but I'm not sure. I. I I didn't like what they did at all. You're right. Well, I think you hit the mark. It was just more comedy and, and raunch rather than yours had heart, I felt. No, it, even though my staff disagrees with me, maybe. No, I but, thought that did have heart but at I, some point. But I feel like if you're right, if it, had, it, had, it didn't have heart. Yeah. I mean, what we thought of um, was we, we treated the nerds as a persecuted race. So we saw it as, you know, the blacks in the South or the Jews in Germany or so any, that's why there was, you know, they were burning stuff. They're burning the were, effigy. See, that's what I'm trying to, yeah. these guys, but this went over my kid's head. I just tried to explain yeah, well, that to Well, they don't know about with the Jews in, in Germany. Yeah, you would or, think. Or the blacks in the South. So, they, they, you know, uh, you know, it, I, there's no video games that, that show that. You said that you felt like you guys were on the right side of everything except for those two scenes. Have you gotten any, I guess now current day, comments about it being racist at times or a little homophobic with your character? Or is that not something that people have really mentioned? Not really. Not really. I mean, I could, I, almost the opposite, that it was, it, it was, uh, it was not homophobic. That, uh, that was kind of interesting, too. The, 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 the studio didn't want a you know a stereotypical gay character um but it was okay if it was black if the character was black yeah the that studio is. the studio said it was okay you guys didn't have to fight yeah. for that at all they just said okay that's fine they liked that better mm. wow did they say why no hmm. huh I wanted to know too about the the gay character because there's parts in the movie where uh, they say that the the lambda lambda lambdas accept anyone of any race, any creed, and then he chimes in, you know, any sexual orientation, and even the nerds look at him like he's crazy. And then there's also the aspect of he's almost looked at in my mind in this movie, which I thought I think's hilarious. But there are aspects of him looking kind of like a pedophile in the movie. He's constantly hanging hanging out with that 12 year old yeah, I, kid i thought he looked like he was the big brother and the responsible one who didn't want the kid staying up at night and partying and exercising with him half naked in the living room you know <laughs> in under ruse <laughs> that was the that was the director's fault <laughs> <laughs> yeah blame it on him i but steve it's incredible isn't it incredible we, we we wrote in no scene where the two of them are exercising in front of a television yeah, but that was the, it, yeah. Isn't it incredible, though, Steve? The way these kids view it from the way this was viewed twenty or thirty years ago. I'm I'm blown away right now. You're probably not because you teach every day, so you deal with this every day. I'm just well. Shocked. I really don't because you know I have no idea why 
but I, it's never on iTunes. It's not on uh, uh, Google Play. So the, the kids today haven't really even seen it, a lot of them. We found it on HBO Go, so that's a victory. That's new. That's yeah. new because I started complaining and they started showing it on HBO Go. It's only about six months old. Oh, have, you, really? have you spoken to have yeah. you, Do you have a relationship with people at Fox? No. No. Hmm. Okay. Um, can I, I just wanted to jump in because you uh, early on you started talking about uh, the casting and it's funny because you watch it and it, it's just amazing who's in this you know Anthony Edwards and it's such a small part but John Goodman's fantastic yeah Timothy Busfield John very Goodman, young when when the director by the way was fantastic Jeff Canu he he really made the movie great I mean he really got it he made it better he made the script better and he 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 did the casting um, and and. Uh, uh, he saw John Goodman. He said, "This guy is going to be a superstar." He just—he, I mean, this—it was. I've never seen anything like it. He said, "From you know, from one session on this little teenage, you know, hijinks comedy, he has one meeting with the guy, and he knows he's—he just thinks the guy's fantastic." Um, John so, Goodman recently said on Howard um, how much he actually prepped for the role. And he based it on many coaches he had growing up. And the fact that I thought also Howard said it was also a film that he loved as well. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. You no, know? no, it's it, it's got its place. And and if Fox would have promoted it right and this and that, it, it would have a much bigger place. They, they're, I, like I say, it's never been on iTunes. I mean, for, for 20 years, you couldn't find it. Well, we so I, I don't know what they're doing uh, or what they, what they were doing, but and and then if you remake it, I don't know if that'll work. You know, I mean, so many of these movies are ruined in remakes. Um, I've never seen you know, one improved of, ever. I'm sorry. What? I've never seen one improved. I've always seen them step down the remake. Have you seen any yeah. of these reboots that are better? I can't think of it. I can't. I really can't. I mean, they ruined all the, the Italian movies, the, you know, and the French movies, and they, you know, and, and uh, I go to see. I, I go to Americana, so Longest Yard, it thought was lesser. I think Bad News Beers was lesser. The Fly. Zoolander. The Fly. <laughs> was the Fly better? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. But you mentioned <laughs> if you wanted that they hadn't done a musical yet. Is that something that you've been pushing for? Or you'd be interested in working yes, on? Yes, I'd love to do it. I think it'd be a perfect musical. And I could fix what the, the rape scene. <laughs> we, I th in, uh, next Thursday, I believe we have the president of Fox Movie Channel in studio. And also, there's Jim Giannopoulos, who's the president of all Fox movies. Um, mm -hmm. I happen to date a Greek in, who's part of the, the – there is a Greek mafia in Hollywood. So I, I'm going to have to kick some tires on this. I can't let it go. I love this movie. I really do. No, I do too. It was my it was my best experience in, in show business. And and the, the the story was the true story of my next door neighbor. I went to the University of Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and um, the, my next door neighbor uh, had that happen to him. He didn't he didn't get into any of the fraternities, and uh, he 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 started his own fraternity, and it was just the you know, it was just a horrible fraternity. They'd lose 80 to nothing in football and, you know, their parties were dirty and, and, uh, but they had a ball, you know, did so they, that, that was the stuff with the, the women. Did they videotape any sororities or was that in your guys? No. Well, oh. they weren't into revenge. The revenge was, you know, was, was, was this group of nerds. Mm. Um, so no, they didn't, they weren't, they weren't bullied. Well, I mean, I don't know if they were bullied. I mean, can we? Can, I want to uh, step away from nerds, if I may, uh, which I can't believe I'm saying because it is one of my favorite films. <laughs> but when I look at your resume, I'm blown away because you have a very diverse slate. Some of my my uh, favorite TV shows. I want to. Can you talk about your experience writing for The Odd Couple? You, you did the one episode. Well, with... well uh, Gary Marshall was my manager. Wow. Uh, and. Um, I, I was involved with a really good group of people, Gary Marshall being the best. Um, and so I actually, my, one of my first jobs was on The Odd Couple. He would pay, I think he'd pay me $5 a joke. And, you, and you, I would write, you know, 10 or 20 clean and dirty jokes, you know. And, um, and then Gary would read them. And if he liked some, then he'd mark them down. Then maybe there'd be eight or nine or something. And then I'd wait 
six hours and at the end of the reading uh, on the, on the set uh, they'd show them to uh, Tony Randall and and um, Jack Clark uh, yeah Clark, yeah and and uh, and they'd look at him and go oh these are shit and they, they'd throw them away and just everyone would walk out you know so um, I mean that was my first experience uh, uh, working on a show and and Klugman and Randall were the consummate professionals. Tell me you know, about they, them on that, on that show. I, I've it's one of my favorite shows. It was brilliant. It was a brilliant show. Yeah. It Tell really me about was. them. Gary, what, speak Gary to them. Marshall's brilliant. Gary, Gary Marshall, I, I, he's got to be one of the top uh, TV guys ever. Him ever. And, uh, you so know, happy days, Norman, Laverne and Shirley. Him and Norman guys. Lear and mm -hmm. uh, Jim Brooks and and uh, you know of that time period that time you know. and he's still directing he, he six shows on the air at once and still directing today but go back speak to wh why were the what you said the consummate professionals were uh klugman and and uh randall they just they, they they knew what they were doing they knew what they liked they they you know they were very professional about it they they you know and they delivered i mean they were the, you know they were, they were just the consummate professionals the did, two of them what, did they have fun making that Series, could you tell? They, yeah, they did with each other. Yeah, that was a yeah, that was a fun show. That was yeah, people had fun on that show. Some of the shows weren't so fun, but that which that ones weren't fun? The but... Laverne and Shirley was supposed to be a nightmare. I, I didn't work on it, but it was supposed to be really bad. Um, and uh, Happy um, Days was was that Happy Days set? You also Happy, Happy Days was a blast. Happy Days was a blast. Is that where you met Probably. Ted McGinley? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, Ted being cast in Nerds was a surprise. Um, I, you know, I, I really, uh, I didn't say get Ted McGinley to play the part. You know, they, they they came up with him, and he he is a sensational guy. He's just a, he's a great person, really sweet. He, he he's very professional too, and very successful. He really he really had a great. I mean, career. I think there's no coincidence that he worked so much because he probably is just that great a guy. You know what I mean? He's yeah. probably a great guy to have yeah, on set. Yeah, everyone loves him. Everyone loves yep. him, and, and and he's funny. He's funny as hell. You know, he re he'll really just do stupid humor beautifully. Tell me about the Partridge Family. Partridge Family was that that was that when I left Wisconsin, uh, uh, coming out to Hollywood, uh, where my friend Alan Mandel helped me get into show business. Uh, the goal in my mind was to write for Partridge Family, and and because again, I don't, I don't, I'm not good with reality, so it it was it was whimsical. It, it was actually just a very easy show for me to write. What do you mean you're and not good with reality? I I don't do well with reality, and so I I couldn't write, uh, you know, a, a, a real movie or a real show, or I, I, I or, or or even deal with any reality. Real life situation. And, mm -hmm. Needs to be a little. It needs to be a little fantastic. Yeah, it's just everything's pretty ridiculous, and um, so uh, Partridge Family was just the perfect show for that, and it, it was just light and whimsical. And did you work on and, set? Did you interact with the actors on that show as well? Yeah, and that one uh, we would because it, it was really fun the way it was shot. I mean, it, it was very easy. It, 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 some of these shows are really hard to shoot, and that was really easy. So, that, I mean, they shot kind of from uh, nine to five. I had to be there, and the scripts were done. They were shot like a movie, so the, the scripts were done before they shot them. And uh, you know, on the on the multi camera shows, you're up three nights a week. You know, working until four in the morning, and and. Uh, not not on a one camera film show. They're all it's 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 uh, it's it's it was just really nice and reasonable. And it it was it was a top ten show, and I didn't realize what a big star David Cassidy was. He was a terrific guy, and uh, um, young I Danny Bonaducci. Do you remember working he, with him? Yeah, he was hysterical. I loved him. He he was my favorite. Um, and Susan Day was uh, I was good friends with her, and. Uh, uh, Dale McRaven was great. He really kind of made that show. He and, and he is? was a terrific writer. I don't know if you've oh, heard of him. He's right. He, no. He wrote, pardon? No, I haven't heard of him. Oh, he he was amazing. He he did, he's the one that made Partridge Family great. And and then there was he also did uh, Mork and Mindy, and um and he, I think he did the Dick Van Dyke show and everything. He he was in with uh, Gary Marshall, uh in that group and um. 
you know, there, there was just a tremendous Hollywood group around Gary Marshall with, you know, Penny Marshall and Rob Reiner and Albert Brooks. And, uh, you know, it just, it, it was an amazing, Nancy Shire and Chuck Shire. And, you know, it, it was, it was an amazing group of writers. Are you in touch with anyone from, from the, the, those days of Hollywood act, the actors, you know? The, uh, you know, I run into people from time to time, you know, some people, I mean, my, my rabbi or whatever, my biggest supporter was Brandon Tartikoff. Uh, ABC, right? Or NBC, NBC, NBC excuse me. Sorry. Brand, Brandon Tartikoff was the greatest network executive ever. And, um, I, I was very fortunate that he was my backer. So he, his first job in Hollywood, it was, uh, you know, I, was, I, I, I did a show called Quark, which was about a garbage ship in outer space. And it was created by Buck Henry. And um, so Brandon's first job in show business was, was the, being current programming on our show. So he hung out with us and we, you know, he went to dailies and he loved the show and this and that. And, and, and a month and a half later, he was named the president of, uh, of NBC. Um, and... You know, so I was I was friends with him, and and uh, he ran the network, you know, and controlled two billion dollars worth of money each year, and I, it, was, it was really phenomenal. He, I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. He's no, I have, of course we have. No, I've heard of him. The, these kids probably uh, haven't, but oh, so, yeah, no, he was huge. Uh, in as far as the actors, do you stay in touch with some of the actors from that time period? The actors? Yeah, if, you know, when you think... Yeah, of... I was friends with uh, Dudley Moore a little bit. Remember Dudley Moore? Of course, from Arthur, yeah. Yeah, he, he, I, I wrote a movie called The Truth About Swedes, and uh, Dudley went to star in it, and Tuesday Weld was going to be in it, and I went through a whole thing with him, and he, he was... And then Dick Benjamin was the star of Quark. Um, Dick Benjamin, that cool... one you got me on. I don't think... I'm a TV holic. I don't know Dick Benjamin. You see, I'll okay, he he was a big star. He 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 actually was a very successful director. He he directed uh, 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 my favorite year for Mel Brooks. Oh my god, amazing film! Yeah, really yeah. amazing. Based no, on Dick, what Dick Errol was Flynn, a great right? director. He made a lot of films and and uh, and a great guy, and and he was and a great actor. I mean, he would, people loved him. He, you know, he was in uh, Goodbye Columbus. Gotcha, and then Westworld. I see. Oh, yeah. wow. wow. He, you know, he's still working. Ch he, Children's Hospital, which Henry Winkler does. And Ray Donovan. Oh, he's, he's, mm -hmm. oh yeah, okay. I know who this guy is. Oh, yeah, he's phenomenal. Yeah, no, he's very famous. He's very, very yeah, he's, famous. Or he was. You know, it's interesting. As you get old, you don't know the new stars. You know, you, you, you know and, and uh, so to me, all these, you know, he was a really big star. And, and the kids today probably wouldn't even know who he is. So tell us um, about the Emmy you won on All in the Family. Was, it, was that where you got your Emmy? Yes, it, it was Emmy. Uh, well, on the, the Emmy and the, on the family, uh, it was my story idea. And um, I, I went into All in the Family and pitched the story idea. And uh, basically, Norman Lear said, we're going to buy this, but we're not going to let you write it. And I said, well, but what do you mean you're not going to let me write it? And he said, well, you know, what do you know about menopause? And I said, well, my mother's going through menopause. And he said, well... Um, uh, we're going to have, so they have this other guy write it. I, I don't know if I should say his name. Why not? Bert Styler. Okay. And the script was no good. And then Don Nickel, who I think is one of the greatest writers in the history of television, um, wrote, uh, wrote the script and it was sensational. So I couldn't even argue with them. This was for and, Edith's problem? For the, yes. Got it. Yes. And it won the Emmy and, uh, I got a certificate and, um, you know, I was 23, 24 years old, Damn. you know, so, so it, was, it, it was, it was, it was pretty neat. That's was what it? you get a certificate. You probably yeah. got the, tro you probably got a trophy too, didn't you? No, you don't get the trophy if you only get a story credit. Oh. Hmm. Well, so. You still get the claim. We should make you a fake trophy. Yep. Put it up anyway. My, well, you know, my dad used to go plate the trophies and he gave me one. So I, <laughs> I had a fake one. Oh nice. my God. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. And did you work with Carol O'Connor in, in anyone? Did did you have any interaction no, with No, I was friendly with Rob Reiner. Damn. And uh, I used to play basketball with him. And you're not in touch yeah. with him anymore? I, sometimes. I saw him a couple of years ago. 
Um, I, I'm in Chicago now, so they're no, all. No, I in know. LA. So it's, I, yeah. Yeah. So I so I don't see a lot of the people. I see Gary Marshall. You know, every once every once I check in on with him. And no, and he has another film coming out. Is it Mother's Day that Gary? Yes. Just, I mean, it's yes. incredible. Can yes. you speak about being in touch with him? But your last IMDb credit is um, 20 years ago now. Is there something else that you feel like you need the world to know, a story you need to tell, or do you think that we won't be hearing your words anytime soon? Well, I'm 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 writing novels and I write uh, screenplays, so I know I'm still with hope to do something. And I, uh, you know, I have uh, I'm really into these uh, web series projects but i quit the business pretty much when i was 50 years old i just quit it i was you know they they you're you're thrown out when you're 50 and you know you 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 know you either are hot or you're not and um i couldn't go down one more hallway and 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 tell one more vice president of a studio one more ridiculous idea i just couldn't do it so um I, I just sold my house and I moved back to Chicago. Are there web series you're working on now? I love that you're that you're interested in them. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm no. I well, as you know, as for the for the kids breaking into Hollywood, I think that's the way to do it. And so I'm a teacher now. I I, I have you know a couple hundred students, and uh, so I I encourage them to make these web series. And uh, I, I you know I I I love now that you can make these things with your phone. So I make. I made a pilot. I have a, a Steve Zachary's videos on Vimeo, and uh, I, I made a full-length 120-minute movie uh, called A Nerd in the Woods, um, which is me driving around the country, uh, uh, you know, going to all the most beautiful places in the, in the, in the country and, and uh, just talking into the camera myself, holding it myself. Not, you know, I, I love that you can just make movies with your phone. So non-scripted? Yeah. You just were speaking non off the top? Yeah, non-scripted, non-scripted. And, and then, but the editing is amazing, too, because you edit it on iMovie. And, you know, it's, you, it's, 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 you can do a really, really good job with it. And, um, and I love it for the kids breaking in because you, they don't need a production company. They don't need a studio. They don't need a manager. They don't need an agent. They, they can, you know, Workaholics is became a series broad city became a series sunny in philadelphia drunken, yeah drunken history became a series uh and my favorite one was high maintenance which which is coming on hbo i think now uh this year do you know high maintenance mm -mm. Mm -mm. nope but we will oh, t take a look at it watch the episode called matilda it's, it's amazing cool it's very well written and i'm i'm, I'm fairly i i know it was the first on-demand movie on Vimeo, and um, and um, I I think it's going on HBO. Love hearing that. Um, so this to me, this is the way the kids should break in. And so we made a little on on my Vimeo site. We we made a a six-minute uh, pilot about a student in college, you know, and we just improved it and ad lived it and stuff like that. And then, you know, and then we, we reshoot it or we rework it or we do this or we do that. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm just encouraging people to, to make these things. You, you know, not just write them, but go and make them. Go make them. That must be gold to your ears, Kevin, because that's no, what you're saying I say that all the time. time. No, I say it all the time, too. It's, it's a, that's <laughs> the great thing about this world. The, that is the great part of the world with the technology. And, yeah, it, it wouldn't be the way it was for guys like you, you know, with spec scripts and all that oh, stuff. Oh, my God, we had nothing like this. We, you know, we had to write a script, and then, you know, uh, I, you, you had to know someone. I mean, you still have to know someone, but, you you know, and, and then they have to like your script, and then they you have to get an opportunity, and then you have to write a good one when you get it, and then if you're lucky, you're in. And, and uh, you know, I broke into show business without nepotism. I didn't know anyone. Um, I, I, I had my friend from college, Alan Mandel, who was out there working on The Odd Couple. And I wrote a spec script, and then Gary Marshall read him and liked him, and then he signed me. So, you know, that was it. Um, but uh, nowadays, it's, you know, these, these kids, they're, they're, they love it. They're very talented, and it's just very hard to break in. But with the web series, yeah, you, you know, they, they can really do it. Steve Zacharias, thank you so, so much uh, for calling in and, and um, 
and sharing all this amazing information. And uh, I, I'm, I will be a fan for, for, of yours and this movie for many, many, many years to come. And, and for being and, so honest with us. Yeah, yeah I, I really it. appreciate it. And by the way, no, we, I'm going to get back in touch with you because I'm going to, you know, let, let's, let me kick, let me just knock on some doors and see because uh, I don't know. It shouldn't die. It, it, it's just such a big, I think, and I think you're right. I think it's musical. I think there's just other things to do with this. So yeah, there's there is there's more things to do. I and think. I'm working on some of them. I'm actually working with a group now to do uh, um, something like that. So uh, I, I, you know, it, I think there are opportunities out there. Keep please keep us posted. And, uh, and I will do. And nice we talking no you. nice talking to you. And we can get so it's it's uh, Steve Zacharias on on uh, Vimeo. Is if we go to Vimeo, we can find your yeah, stuff. Yeah, if you googled uh, Steve, uh, Steve Zacharias videos on Vimeo. We'll be able you to would get to, you. Yeah, you'd get to you'd get to that. And you on social media? Do you do any of that stuff? Twitter or anything? My, no, my son does it all for me and pretends like he's me because I can't do it. <laughs> and, and, and and just he's embarrasses true. me and does terrible things. He's Typical honest, nerd. Yeah. yeah. At least you're honest. Is that is it <laughs> at Steve Zacharias? He, he's uh, uh, John Zacharias is my son. And he, he's he is a tremendous. But what is uh, the which, which, an optimizer? What's your handle, though? Your Twitter handle. I don't know. You don't I don't know. even know what I will is. find out. We, these <laughs> the millennials mystery. these millennials will find Honest. out. I think, you know, if my advice is you should talk to your son. We need you need some kind of Revenge of the Nerds handle. Something that says Revenge of the Nerds. I, I think he's done that. I think he probably that. has. I think, even, I think he's done all kinds of stuff. All right, we're going to find out. We'll do our due diligence, and, and Steve, hopefully we'll stay in touch. And once again, thank you so much for coming okay, on tomorrow's show. All right. We're going to listen. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. 